I'm continuing to experiment with PCB layout options for my 486 DLC here. Uh, since the last video, I have further reduced the size of this card and primarily what I've done is pulled off some of the, maybe the non-essential features from this core card. And when I say non-essential, maybe things for initialization of the shadow ROM to copy my, my actual ROM to get it into RAM. Uh, with that, there's, um, of course, the, the ROM chip. There is the PSOC that helps get that copied over. There are some address latches as part of that. And then I also have my priority interrupt controller, or PIC, which I pulled off of this. Just to see, you know, how how small could I, I start to get this? And, and could this go into a backplane? And then on a separate card, I, of course, could do all the shadowing work and get that ROM copied into this RAM and go from there still have some concerns with this and I don't know if this is the direction I'm going to take yet. I'm going to experiment with some other ideas, but if I look at this the way it sits right now, you know, there's definitely some challenges in routing I, I would need to work through yet. And um, that, that just would take a little bit of time. So uh, not, not a showstopper, but some work required there. And I was just using again, the auto router just to kind of see how far does it get before it starts to kind of get hung up. And right now I have this at a, as a six layer board and with that I'm using three signal layers. So with three signal layers, you know, the auto router uh, can't, can't get through it. I think I could manually get through it and I've got some, some things over here that I would need to move around uh, as an example to maybe make that easier and uh, maybe change placement of some components would be helpful. But anyways, that's as far as I've gotten on this layout, but this could be a potential uh, type of, of approach that I take. I still have concerns with this though. If I go maybe into fabrication of this, you'll see that it's an expensive, this is with shipping or whatever their default shipping option is, which is their fastest shipping option, I believe. Um, but still it's about $70 for five of these boards. Uh, so that's a little expensive. So I am if I if I had high confidence that I wasn't going to mess something up on this board, maybe I wouldn't be so concerned with that. But knowing that I'm taking oh risk with some new approaches to things, uh, I maybe don't want to spend that much on a set of boards. For example, putting this PSOC on the PCB directly, uh, I've not done that before, so there's some risk with that. Either that uh, the design I, I use doesn't work well or... Uh, I find that it's difficult to actually get this soldered on or work with this as I as I move forward. Uh, also, been experimenting maybe with some of the uh, options for you know how large are my traces. So my track width right now I'm using a 0.15 millimeter, and I shrunk the you know the via down a little bit. So I'm going to do some experimenting with that and see you know does that cause me any any problems or is, is that perfectly fine as I do that. There was some previous commentary about as I maybe go to a smaller via drill diameter that might increase the board cost. Um, I did some checking on JLC PCB's website, and as far as I can tell, the the only additional cost, well, first of all, I can go down to 0.2 millimeter for my drill diameter for the via, and I didn't see anything about additional cost unless it was based on number of basically vias. So if you had a lot of vias, you would start to see an additional incremental cost. Um, but I don't think there is a cost for me to go to this uh, sl smaller than standard, uh, whatever the standard was, 0 0.305 or something like that, to come down to this. I don't think there was a, a big difference in price or any difference in price. But given some of the risk with this, uh, I did also maybe lay out another alternative, which is basically just to use a smaller card. And now you're going to notice that I got rid of the ISA slot completely. It's just a pair of these PCI connectors, uh, which you know shrinks this footprint down a bit. And if I look at this, it's about 7.76 inches wide and 4 inches tall. That might be something I could do is just use a standard format card like this and have a series of cards that really are the core instead of trying to have everything on you know one or maybe two cards here now the nice thing about this like this one is fully routed so uh, really no issues with routing i was able to 
just simply re do some basic rearrangement so so that the routing of this was just very easy you know coming off the processor into these data transceivers uh, into the latches you'll see everything just kind of flows right off of that that processor and then I could choose the output that I want to use down here and put everything in a nice sequential order uh, as far as uh, how I populated this PCI connector you know thinking that I would do all my address and data lines and maybe common signals that you'd see on an ISA bus on this connector and everything else over here and maybe I would have four of these cards that would make up the system and they would connect to a backplane which that would which would then also give me ISA slots or other things for my video card sound card etc now the nice thing about this card here though you can see it is pretty simple it is only a four layer card so I was able to drop down to four layers and just simply have two signal layers and then a VCC and ground so I should have you know good distribution for uh, my power thermals whatever else I think I should be be pretty good on all of that uh, as far as the design setup I did stick with this 0.15 and then for the via well that's for the track and then for the via you can see i've got the uh, 0.5 via diameter and a quarter for the drill diameter and i i'll probably do some more reading or research on those and see if there's any other recommendations out there just to validate that those are okay or or suggest something else but i shouldn't really have any high power current requirements for these traces um, as i should be able to be going through those inner planes for that but on this, I got my processor, coprocessor, data transceivers, latches, that's it. And then, you know, any of the control stuff's gonna come from other cards. For example, here maybe is what the, the decode card could look like. So on the decode card, I could have a pair of P-Socks along with my PALs. That's, that's basically doing my generation of signals for the system, uh, like A0, A1, S0, S1, whatever they might be. But then I've got my decode a PSOC over here. I've got a quick header to plug into to program these. I have my control latches. I have an oscillator here. And again, laying this out, I did a little experimenting. And this this PSOC here, I have fully routed. Uh, the auto router was able to work with that fine. And what I did is I just uh, put the really the biggest thing I think is I put a bunch of these caps instead of on the the top or on the back on the, around the PSOC. I put them right underneath the PSOC that I think is going to work out uh, just fine. So these are really close now to the you know appropriate pins, VCC pins. And I can better arrange this. And obviously I have a lot of silk screen work to do that I've not even done cared about at this point. But you know that's going to help. And then in, in this case I've got these resistors that are part of my inline termination. Those are spread out far enough that I think all of this uh, looks pretty good. And this PSOC over here, I just had, I think, two lines left to route. That's the only thing left on this card. And I just need to rearrange rearrange that a little bit so that the caps are underneath in the same way. And I think I'll be perfectly fine there. But this could be, again, a, one card that plugs into the chassis along with the processor card, uh, this one here. And so between those two, I would have much of you know what's over here on the core card clock distribution i would end up putting on my back plane so the back plane would have just a little bit of logic on it really to distribute clock signals uh, to all of the different slots uh, so i think that would be easy to do i would need to make a card yet that has all my basically my my flash rom so i need to have the a rom and then the actual shadowing uh, functionality could be on a, on a card and i think i could probably put the ram right on that card too so maybe three cards is what i would break this into and these cards it ends up if again uh, I, I look at the, the setup of the stack up is just a simple four layer and if i go to fabrication of these you'll see that that drops down to 50 of which half of that is shipping so you know, that means that these cards are getting down to 25 dollars for a set of five and so if i find that i have something messed up on this it's a lot uh, easier for me to to mentally get around spending another 25 dollars for a, a a repair or a different set of pcbs 
Uh, so it lets me experiment a little bit, not take the risk of everything in one, uh, but it does spread it out. And that's maybe one of the things I was trying to get away from is can I consolidate things more? Um, but <clears throat> being that I'm trying to learn so much of this PCB stuff, this might be the, the safer route for me is just to do this for some experimentation. And it just does make the routing much easier. Just you can see I have lots of room that I can do uh, or that I can work with on these cards. Not have to get too concerned about cramming everything too close together and having to go to a six or eight layered board and having more complex routing. So maybe three cards, uh, get a back plane, and that's probably something I can try to work through here in the next week or two and see if I can get all of those uh, looking like they'll, they'll come together. Now, I've not done any fitment type of thing, so I actually need to look at this the slot layout, uh, make sure that this is going to work correctly as I try to plug it into a back plane. But I think it should. Uh, you know, the size of this card really isn't that big. You know, if I go back over here again, you know, seven and three quarters by four inches and I have three of those make up the system and then plug it into a back plane, add my VGA card and my sound card, that that might be be workable. And as I mentioned, you know, this PSOC here, you know, I've been able to now route that successfully by putting a bunch of those caps right underneath the PSOC. And then some of these resistors that are the inline termination, spreading them out a little bit. And that, that gave me enough room to, to get all of that oh, fanned out or spread out uh, in, a, in an okay way. So I guess that's where I'm at. Next step is just to probably get I had another card or two to lay out. So I've got to get the RAM along with the shadowing uh, support on a card somewhere I need to place the pick. And then I'll see if there's anything else I'm missing. And what I'd probably do is just go back to, you know, an earlier version. Oh, maybe I'll just even go all the way back to this, you know, top card that I had for my 386 build and see if I'm missing anything as I look at this build out. So let me turn off some of this. Um, but here, if I, I look at this, you know, what am I missing? So on that other design, I'm missing an I.O. card. So my keyboard, mouse, via. So that would have to be um, maybe one card. I'd probably add my IDE interface to that. So I would have an I.O. card. I think I would have a RAM slash ROM slash shadowing card. I've got the processor and latches card. Uh, these PSOCs have all been absorbed into those other cards. I've got my pals absorbed, you know, pretty much everything else is, is pretty much here. I'll need some physical connectors, obviously for a keyboard and mouse, uh, this power reset, maybe I'll put that on the back plane itself. That looks like I've got most of that covered then. And if I go to the bottom PCB that I was using before that connected to this top PCB, uh, you know, I had a bunch of these cards for standard ISA and then some custom extensions. I'll probably do the same thing. I'll have a standard ISA and maybe with a PCI slot as the, the extension. I'm not trying to follow any standard there, which is perfectly fine. But if I'm going to build a 32-bit card, I've at least got the, the extension support for that. And then these debug headers uh, to go over to my Agilent Logic Analyzer. I mentioned I didn't necessarily care for the PCI Express connectors. They just didn't seem solid enough. Uh, so I'll probably have maybe a slot at the bottom of this uh, that does give me uh, some connectivity over to my, my logic analyzer. And that's probably going to just use this uh, ISA plus PCI type connector. But we'll see. I'm not so worried about that right now. And I think size wise, you know, the goal would be probably to fit all of this into really the space of this bottom set up for my 386. So I had the upper and the lower and the upper is really where all the slots fit into the chassis. So, you know, I think I'll be able to get this all fit into really half of the chassis space that I was using before. But of course, a lot of the functionality is now vertical on a few of these cards. And I, I do have room for another, I think there's two slots up here and maybe one more slot at the bottom that I don't have populated here as far as the physical space is concerned. I'll work on getting all that laid out, see what it uh, starts to turn turn out like, do some 
physical test fitment and then I can go back and just start trying to do a, a nice job on the routing. Like some of this is maybe simple enough that, you know, like this one here, I don't know how much more I would probably add in value to route that myself just because it is laid out in, in a simple way. But I'm sure there will be improvements and I'll post that and get feedback or ask for feedback for, you know, what, what can I improve on the routing or should I improve what's, I guess, a concern in the routing that I should take more time and energy on any of these cards. You know, I probably will do this manual routing just for the exercise, uh, even like this card is a simple card, but it would be good for me to go through and practice doing that. Uh, so that's it for now. And I think next update hopefully is a cleaned up version of maybe four of these, three or four of these cards and a backplane. And so I've got a whole lot of work to do to get all the schematics, you know, split out and set up in the right way, get the PCBs laid out, do some real quick test fitment, see what I need to clean up on the physical connection into the backplane, make sure my bracket looks like it's going to come up in the right spot and uh, maybe print this out on on paper so I can kind of get a better feel for, for how it's going to look um, as it starts to come together. And then maybe uh, for my uh, Christmas present to myself, I'll order up a bunch of PCBs. So thanks for all the feedback. More to come.